Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And in this episode, I want to talk about interview woes or the importance to bringing on the right person onto your team, depending on what the roles and responsibilities will be. And this was a question that was posted by Sheldon Moss and is a great one. Let's have fun with this. But here's what he said. He said that recently he performed an interview. Well, his boss and himself, they were looking for a junior network engineer. And the candidate that was interviewed used to work for his company in the past. Um, he ran the cable from the second floor to the third floor. So basically a cabling technician, what it sounds like. He did an awesome job. This person has 30 years in the industry and he has an updated CCNA. So he says, I asked simple questions and my jaw just dropped. I gave him a scenario. I'm looking to become a network engineer. I heard someone mention something about VLANs. How would you help me understand what a VLAN is? He was unable to answer the question. He also does not know about DCP. I am trying to understand how a person can obtain their CCNA, um, but not even know the concepts of the basics. My boss loved this candidate's personality. Uh, and it was a plus that he, the candidate, was looking for a long-term employment. I mean, looking for a place where he can retire. He is 62, by the way. My boss informed me that I would have to bring him up to speed on the basics if we were to hire him. This is even before we start teaching the technologies that we use. This sounds um, more like a headache than it's worth. Have you ever come across this while interviewing people, dazed and confused? There's a lot of stuff in that particular um, um, question, so let's talk about that. Okay, so again, there's a lot of stuff here, so let's kind of just break it down a little bit, okay? So, have I experienced something like that? Absolutely. Actually, probably more times than I can count. But I start to learn very quickly over the phone interview if they should come in for a in-person interview. That's really what you want to do. You need to first do different screening processes by doing a phone interview first, asking basic questions to kind of get a feel for this person, technically and personality-wise, because those two things are equally important. Okay, And if they pass that, you bring them in for a deeper conversation or a bigger interview process exploring further on their technical skills and further on their personality. That's typically how it is done to avoid things just like this. The one story that I definitely want to share was I was working for an organization and uh, we were looking for another senior network engineer. It's a good practice for critical environments to have two senior network engineers on staff for redundancy. Sounds weird saying that, but it's important, right? If your colleague gets hit by a bus, the company still has someone else, a senior level person to take care of the network, basically, right? Depending on what their roles and responsibilities are. So we're looking for a uh, senior network engineer. And I found like the perfect candidate by looking at the resume. I found like a very low number CCIE, like number 2000 something. And they um, graduated from MIT. This was fantastic because my because my way of thinking is you want to be around smarter people, right? That's really how we all advanced. That's how we, we learn from our mistakes and how we can progress further as engineers or any kind of person in our, in our field. You want to be around smarter people. So I was really excited about this opportunity of, being, of meeting someone that has been a CCIE for a long time, comes from MIT, which is a prestigious school in the United States. So we brought him in for an interview, right? You know, you know shook his hand and started talking to him about his experience, um, like technologies and concepts. And I remember one of the questions that I asked was, it was, I don't know the exact details, but it was something about ACLs. 
That's what I said. I said, tell me how you do an ACL where I can filter based on the source port number. Okay. He responded to me and says, well, what's an ACL? Okay. It's an acronym. So maybe some people don't go by acronyms. So I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but I said, it's access control list. And he still stumbled. He did not really know what that was. He didn't have much exposure to that. So that was a so that was a red flag. So I started asking him more questions around them, like other technologies. And I realized I had to um, be very basic with my questions. And I'm thinking, I'm talking to a CCIE here that can't answer CCNA level questions. And it didn't take long for me to start looking at the resume to figure out why is this the case? He comes from MIT. That's a... Only smart people go to that school and they can afford it, of course. But he's also a CCIE in the early days where there really wasn't much material. Actually, there was no material. Even when I took my CCIE, there was no study material for me to prepare for that exam, which meant like for him, he was on his own and he, he, he passed it. By looking at the resume, it seemed like that once he became a CCIE, he automatically got promoted or was looking for opportunity as a network manager. And he'd been a network manager for years, like for two or three years based on his resume. That meant that he had no hands-on experience after that point. Like he got to a CCIE, bam, he's done with the technical stuff. I'm a manager now. And he never touched it. And if you um, don't use it, you lose it. That's just the way it is. And this person proved that. And I guess he lost his job as a network manager and figured, hey, I'm a CCIE. Let me get back into the ring and become an engineer again. That's not how that works. So unfortunately, the interview was not successful. I was very disappointed, but it was also a learning experience for me as well, um, which is kind of you said, but, you know, he should know DHCP. He, he's a CCNA. That is the concern that people are having in this field about people who are certified. My story and your story, Sheldon, is proof of the problem with certifications and why a practical experience is really more important. So choosing the right person for your team is really important and should be part of your decision making process. So here's how I really view it when you are interviewing a, in this case, a network engineer, that you have a engineer assessment or a technical person's assessment, then you have the manager assessment. So that means there is a technical interview part, and then there's the manager um, interview part. And the first part should come from the technical person. They should sit down and do a technical interview with this person based on what is required for that position that they are applying for, and also based on what they have listed on their resume. Because anything on your resume is fair game for me to ask you anything that I want or to see how much of that you actually know. So part of the decision-making process, again, is doing the technical interview of asking him the concepts and technical skills, how that person thinks with um, troubleshooting scenarios, configuration, and how they handle projects, things like that. Then there's also, again, the management assessment, and that's the manager's job to figure out if this person is a good fit. Um, they're checking out their characters, their work ethics, their work dynamics with working as part of a team. Some people prefer to be solo, and that might not work because in some environments, there is a team environment. And when I say team, I don't mean like a team of network engineers. That could be the case, but a team could also consist of not just the network engineers, but desktop technicians, server administrators, database administrators, storage engineers. That's part of the IT umbrella, and you'd be working with these people a lot for troubleshooting issues or doing integration between different projects and stuff that you're working on. So that's something that a manager is looking for if you are a good fit in the company. So I think with that information, if the technical interview is clear, which means check this person um, does have the concepts, they do have the technical skills based on the roles and responsibilities that we want for this person. If it passes that, then it should be up to the manager to make the final decision like, saying, okay, I like this person's personality, I like this person's work ethics and their dynamic, 
So basically, we have two passes for that individual. Um, but if the person likes, so in your particular case, Sheldon, you said though that he failed your technical assessment, but that person passed the manager's assessment. And that's what it sounds like, that this person has a great personality, has good work, uh, work ethics, uh, probably good working dynamics. So manager-wise, he got flying colors. But in terms of the technical part, he failed that. But again, it comes down to what would be his roles and responsibilities in the first place. What would he be doing in this role as a junior network engineer? That's what's really important here. But hiring the right person based on the roles and responsibilities is important because it puts your network at risk. And the manager should know that. That yes, you might love that person's personality. They're just great. But they could jeopardize the stability of your network if they do not know what they're doing. And I not personally experienced that, but indirectly experienced that. When I worked for a particular organization, when I was applying for a job, there were two network engineers that were there in the company. And there was a broadcast storm that occurred. So it brought down the entire network. This is a critical network that was critical to the business. And these two network engineers did not know what they were doing. They were in the day center. They were panicking. The network is down for hours and hours. The managers are getting frantic. They're walking in saying, how can we help? Because their network engineers did not know what was going on, how to troubleshoot it at all. They were really, really like these people do not know what they're doing. And after that particular incident was resolved, I don't know how, how they resolved it. Okay, I'm assuming they rebooted something. Um, one of those network engineers was basically terminated a week later, probably less than that. And that's where I came on board. They were interviewing. They were looking. We need a CCIE. Because through their eyes, they said, okay, CCIE seems to be a person that knows what they're doing. Well, remember my stories. That's not necessarily true. So when I interviewed for that organization, I was around managers. There was not a single technical person in that interview process. And they're asking me questions right from the textbook. They got their books and they're just reading the questions. What's the default encapsulation for a serial interface? Um, HDOC, they're like, yes, that's right. It was like, okay, that's, it was very unusual because I never had an interview with only a management staff, but I knew why. Management did not trust the network engineers that they hired, right? One of them was fired. So when I was hired, they fired the other network guy a week later after that. And I remember there was some outage that occurred like probably two or three months after I was hired. And I solved it within a short period of time. And that's when one of the managers communicated with me, we made the right decision of how we should interview people in terms of looking for people who are qualified because if we hire the wrong people, our network can be down for hours and they experienced it. They felt the pain from their customers. So your manager, might love this person. He has the greatest personality. But if this person is responsible for bringing down the network, that could put your network at risk. So let me just wrap some of the other points that I probably didn't bring up, though, based on Sheldon's question. Because I think it's a really great one here. It's a struggle between this is why people are laughing at certifications. And like, why should I even take it seriously? Because you just gave two stories. Sheldon gave his story. I gave my story about a CCIE. And basically, they got either they were fired or they were not hired. So why should I even emphasize on that, right? Well, what I have always said from the very beginning of this channel, okay, in every episode or each episode that I talk about this kind of subject matter, I say that there are both important certifications and experience. Together, they are a lethal weapon because the certification, as I said before, is a tool. It is to get your foot into the door to get the opportunity of an interview. Then it is your practical experience 
that you're going to be talking about during the interview because the technical people, that's what they care about. Not reading some textbook question that is not practical at all. It's not. Okay. So those two things is what's very valuable. And that's what I have personally learned from my experience, from my past, and what I'm trying to convey to, um, to all of you out there. Being certified is good. You're on the right track, but that's just one part of it if you cannot get the practical experience behind it. But that gets us to Cash 22. I think I said that right. Where this is a person um, who might be 62 years old. He's gaining a position as a junior network engineer. Okay, so this is the perfect example of a person getting their shot as being a network engineer. This is perfect. This is exactly what we want more of, right? Um, and he did the right thing. He got his CCNA. So, so far, so good. So your question is, yeah, but he doesn't know what a VLAN is. He doesn't know what DHCP is. Cert certifications are bullshit, okay? And maybe how things are taught isn't taught in the way that can practically explain this is what DHCP is. This is what a VLAN is. I have CCNA books back there, probably an older one, much, much, much older of that. Not presented in a practical way. And I think that's really what these tests are. Remember, I still take my certification test for my own CCIE. You know, I cringe because I'm like, oh my gosh, why are you asking this question? Because I would never do that or I wouldn't do anything in a practical way for a CCIE level question. And I've been, talking, I've been saying that for years. Um, so I'm giving this person a benefit of the doubt here that certifications aren't teaching you practical experience. It's textbook experience. So when he said he doesn't know, because he never really practically applied it. Because reading about it is really great, though. But if you don't know how to apply it in a practical setting, it's not going to be very clear. Like, you have to see it. Like, here's what VLANs does. You're like, oh, I see that because you can practically see when you configure it. Textbooks don't do that crap. They just don't do it at all. Again, there's a two-step There's a two -step process, certifications, but practical experience. Okay, so the fact that he doesn't truly understand that, not to surprise, but he is a junior network engineer. So he probably knows some basics. Um, I wasn't in that interview process, but I'm trying to, you know, extend out an olive leaf here um, to try to get people to understand, you know, what certifications aren't doing. They're not. They're not teaching you about practical. Sheldon, you brought up. You brought up the perfect question to him. You said to the interviewer or to the interviewee, "I'm looking to become a network engineer. I heard someone mention something about VLANs. How would you help me understand what a VLAN is?" There would never be a question during the CCNA because that question is a practical question that I would say. So if you ask me that, I would know how to answer that because I have got my hands dirty for that. Okay. So when you're interviewing a person that is only a textbook certified person, you got to ask a little bit different. You got you to just keep it simple. What is a VLAN? You know, why could you use it? Just see where the brain and just and just tell them. Just start talking. Tell me what you know about it. Okay. We can go down further if we need to, though. Just see how their brain thinks, how much they know about a topic. That's really all you have to do. What is a VLAN? What is DCP? Just any little part of it. You want to see how they think. Because again, this is a junior network engineering position. So I'm guessing that the roles and responsibilities um, are very limited, as they should be, though. Okay. He or she should not be touching core switches, aggregation routers, that that should not be in the um, in the hands of a person who's starting out because they could put your network at risk. But if their tasks are very simple, this can allow this person to definitely um, gain the practical experience and the rest could be history for that person. And we're done with this episode. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer or anything in the networking field, Post those questions below in the comments and your question may come up in a future episode on this channel. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. That would mean a lot. And support us at rodhub.net. And until next time, keep networking.